Anton Bruckner was a humble and amiable man, a musical genius who was nevertheless plagued by self-doubt. His belief in God, however, was unshakable. He was always well ahead of his contemporaries and became one of the greatest symphonists, organists and composers of the Romantic period. Throughout his life, he found particular joy in the town of Steyr. Having received a musical education from his father, he served as a choir boy in St. Florian before working as a teacher's assistant in Windhag and then Kronstorf. The music and culture being produced in the nearby town of Steyr were some of the most important in the country at that time. This, together with the organ that Franz Savar Christman had built in the parish church in 1772, drew the young Bruckner to visit as he eagerly completed his studies in St. Florian. Anton Bruckner was unequalled in his talent for improvisation. The power of music would accompany him throughout his life. In 1868, his path led him to Vienna via Linz. There he became a professor at the conservatory, as well as court organist. In later years, Anton Bruckner would be given an honorary doctorate from the University of Vienna. He enjoyed returning to Steyr, especially during the summer months, a place which offered him peace and rest, and where the townsfolk showed him goodwill and appreciation. Traces of Anton Bruckner can be found everywhere today, as many of his later works were largely composed there. It is of great significance for the city of Steyr that Anton Bruckner worked on his two last major symphonies here. He used the tranquility and the idyllic conditions of the summer months to escape the hectic city of Vienna, as he himself described it, and to find peace and quiet so that he could compose. And so he continued working on his eighth symphony from 1885. He wrote the first movement here before working on his Ninth Symphony. It is noteworthy that he revised his first symphony in Steyr and that he completely revised his Requiem as well. He also worked on his Helgoland composition and it is said that the lost composition called Di Rosa related to the borough of Sierning was created here. Bruckner worshipped Richard Wagner, while Gustav Mahler worshipped him in turn. Anton Bruckner's catalogue of works includes 149 titles, including 11 symphonies, a draft symphony, several masses, and both religious and secular choral works. He revised his works again and again, owing to his critics. He conducted the draft of his Eighth Symphony, with the now famous annotation Hallelujah in Steyr in 1885. Anton Bruckner. The sound of Steyr rang in Anton Bruckner's ears as he wrote his compositions. 
This was the sound of the parish church, and it can be clearly heard in his 8th and 9th symphonies, the largest part of which, of course, he wrote while in Steyr. I have just arrived in Steyr and will remain hard at work, he wrote in 1887. From this point on, he would spend an increasing amount of time in the Iron Age city. Besides working on his compositions, he also cultivated friendships with the local choral associations and the Steyr Society of Music Friends. His companions included George Pointner, mayor of Steyr from 1879, the pastors George Arminger and Johann Eichinger, the musician and scribe Leopold Hofmeier, friend and benefactor Karl Almerot, to whom he dedicated the song Abend Sauber, and Anton Gruber, the conductor of the parish church choir and founder of the Steyrer Singing Society. Today's MGV Sängerlust in Steyr dates back to 1844, the year in which the Singing Society was founded and also has its roots in the Krenzian Association, begun in 1858. The Singing Society was not just a male choral association, but mainly a social club. Both societies granted Bruckner honorary membership. Bruckner's musical legacy, his records and the documents which have been left to us will forever connect the MGV Sängerlust with the composer. Bruckner met with Josef Werndl, the industrial pioneer from Steyr, and was welcomed as a friend in the house of brushmaker and manufacturer Anton Meyer in the Wehrgraben district of the city. Meyer was a mischievous rogue who thought Bruckner visited for the sake of his beautiful daughters, all of whom were wonderful singers. He gushingly referred to Anton's daughter, Johanna, later Scholz, a gifted soloist, as his prima donna. Bruckner would never marry or have children. Unable to withstand the device, he wanted his hair pinched off without clippers by the barber and local poet Josef Stöger in his Gletschersaal at the confluence of the Enns and Steyr rivers. Put away that awful machine, he told Stöger, who kept the famous hair for posterity. Bruckner shared a deep human and musical connection with Franz Sava Bayer. His dearest friend, as Bruckner called him, was a choir master who lived with his wife Eula in the venerable Mesner Häusl. Bayer was particularly committed to Bruckner's works being performed in the parish church. Bruckner gave improvisations from his 7th and 9th symphonies in 1891, and although he was already very ill, Bruckner was playing the organ in 1893 when the acclaimed Mass in D minor was performed. In 1894, Bruckner left the city once more and headed for Vienna. He was never to return. He was only ever in written contact with his friends in Steyr during the last two years of his life. The composer's life would fall silent forever on the 11th of October 1896. He was granted his wish that he be buried at the monastery in St. Florian. In 1898, a monument to this musician of God 
was unveiled as today's Anton Bruckner-Platz in Steyr to honour his work forever, the city in which he so gladly spent time each year. <laughs>